Hi, I'm Matt from Tubby Tarot. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book chat. Yes, I know, I know. Aren't you excited? If you don't like book chat, press fast forward or go and look at some other stuff that I've done in my, um, in my back catalogue. But for those of you who do like book chat, I have got a little surprise for you. I know that you've seen one or two of the books in my book collection and a few of them are what I'm going to show you today. But what I thought I'd do is I want to show you some classics, okay, um, some classic books that you can read in a day, maybe two days. All right. This is specifically for people who are not familiar um, with Gothic literature, Gothic classics. Okay. These are basically, all of these are kind of uh, Victorian, either written or set in that era. Um, but it's mainly for people who don't know where to start. Okay. So I know when I first started reading Victorian literature, I was like, this is, this is really hard, man. This is really hard stuff. And of course, I immediately started with Dracula, which is a, strangely enough, although it's a really cool book, it's really dense. Okay, the fucking thing is like this big. All right. And it's a, it's a really dense book. Um, it's not something that I would recommend people start with when you decide to read Victorian literature. So that's why I thought like, hmm, there are people out there on the, on the net, um, on YouTube, who are saying there's other ways to do this. There are other ways to introduce yourself to Victorian stuff, reading. Because Victorian, um, the Victorian language is very, it's, it's very different. It's very different to what we know as English, okay? It's slightly more, um, it, it's, it's a bit weirder. It's, it's kind of more verbose. They would use words that we are not used to using in English. So without any further ado, let's help you understand the words and let's help you get your toes into the water of Victorian literature. So the very first um, book I want to show you, of course you've all seen this, but I don't think you realize how short the book is. It's by Robert Louis Stevenson and it's called The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There it is. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. There it is. Okay. Um, it's tiny. Look there. It's a small little book. Now, this book um, actually... <laughs> It is, I'll tell you exactly how many pages it is. It is only, it is only 88 pages long. In fact, it's probably less because this has got an introduction. So it's a one day read, okay? Um, and it's not weird little teeny tiny writing. It's pretty cool writing. And we all know the, we all know the story about the guy who takes the potion and turns into his darker side, okay? Um, Mr. Hyde, all right? And he's a, he's a dreadful man. Uh, this is the Collins Classic Edition. A lot of the time, this book comes as part of a, um, a Robert Louis Stevenson collection of short stories. So this would be like the novella. It's not even really long enough to be a novella. It's kind of a long short story. And then it would have stuff, other stuff like in the collection. But it is, to me, a lot. I don't like Robert Louis Stevenson. This is literally the only book of his that I really, really like reading. Um, so I went in out and I got this little Collins Classic one a one book edition small enough guys and girls that you can read it in a day all right in fact maybe even an afternoon so that's that's really cool and it's nicely victorian then of course we have mary shelley's frankenstein um i got it it's the same it's also the collins classic okay there it is mary shelley's frankenstein now this it looks like a really thick book okay um it's not uh it's not hugely difficult to read and that's why i'm putting it on this list this could be read in two days okay if you're a slow reader maybe three days but it's a it's it's such a great book because you really you really want to know what's going to happen next so when you sit down to read this it's like oh my god it's like what it's like a real page turner so i am putting this on the list at most it'll take you three days to read this okay if you're kind of reading in a, if you're like a middle of the road medium reader, you'll be able to read this. Again, it's a wonderful story. We all know about, you know, the Frankenstein monster. Uh, and we know that um, Mary Shelley was like 17 or 16 or 17 years old when she wrote this and blah, blah, blah. It's really cool. It's a good book. It's a nice book. It's something that if you've read it, um, it's easy to read. Um, and once you've read it, you'll want to read it again at some stage. It's that kind of book. So that's another bit longer, two, maybe three day read. Okay. Now, the following books, <laughs> these are 
always part of a collection. These three books I'm going to show you, well, these two books I'm going to show you are generally set up as short stories that are part of collections, but you can, if you hunt around, you can get the single book version. Now, this is Charles Dickens. I don't like Dickens. I find him too verbose, and please don't shoot me on the, on the, in the legs and the knees because I'm, I'm just not a Charles Dickens fan. Charles Dickens is like the epitome of Victorian literature, okay? And I'm just like, dude, I'm super bored. His books are this thick, and generally he takes about eight pages to describe a vase, okay? He's like the Victorian Stephen King. <laughs> Okay, but this is one book that I, I cherish and I love and I watch the movie all the time and I, it's just such a cool um, Dickens book. It's called A Christmas Carol. We all, again, we all know this. It's about Scrooge and how he gets visited by all the, all the, the, the ghosts and then he becomes a really good person at the end. So it's kind of a story of redemption and it is minute. Um, my version is really, really small, really small and it's got pictures. So this is, although it is only, I'll tell you now, um, although it is only, it's literally 90, 95 pages, um, you could probably say it's only 80 because I've got pictures all over mine. It's a really good, um, it's a good introduction to, uh, to Victorian literature, um, and it's of course one of Charles Dickens's most famous stories, and it is basically a short story. So it's a really nice way to dip your toe into the Victorian um, literature, and especially Charles Dickens. If you like the way he writes this, you can maybe be brave and tackle one of his bigger works. Okay, the next book I want to show you is a, it's kind of a book, it's a book that is, um, it was written before Dracula, and you've all heard of this, I'm sure. It's a book by Sheridan uh, Le Fanu, and it is a book called Carmilla. It is usually included, again, it is included in um, collections of Le Fanu, uh, he is, uh, he's quite famous, he's quite a famous Victorian writer, um, in fact, I, I think he's like just before Victorian, the uh, Victorian era, and this is probably his, one of his most famous, or if not his most famous book uh, or story, because it's really a short story, and I was very fortunate in that I got, I got this one, okay, it's literally, there's the book, okay, it's, it's a short story. But again, I got this separately because I really don't like a lot of his other stuff. Um, some of his other stuff is pretty good, but this is, the, this is the story you want to get, okay? And it is about lesbian vampirism and all kinds of sapphic stuff going on. And it's got vampires, it's got cats, black cats, it's got all kinds of stuff. And the book, the story, is this little version I've got is only 82 pages. But it's probably not because it also has pictures. Okay, so you could probably say it's about 75 pages. Okay, and it's a great, great novel. It's easy to understand. The writing is not very difficult. It's not the hardcore Victorian stuff. Um, it's a really cool book, um, whether you're lesbian or not. It doesn't matter. This is a really cool book. They made into movies so many times. Um, but this is definitely a way for you to, especially if you are into vampire stuff, it's a way for you to dip your toe um, into the shallow end of Victorian horror, because this is a true, this is a real horror story. This and, um, and this kind of Jekyll and Hyde, to me they're more frightening than um, Frankenstein and, and, you know, Island of Lost Souls and that sort of thing. So this is a really cool book if you can get it. Um, it's quite difficult to get this particular, um, it's called the Rare Classics Collection. Look online, go onto eBay or wherever you buy your books, Amazon, um, no, not eBay, Amazon, and see if you can get this little version. Okay, the other bonus is, and I've said this before, the cover to this feels almost like, like rubber. It's just, it, it's cardboard, but it feels like it's been rubberized on the outside. So I really dig this book. Okay, um, the next book I'm going to talk about is a, it's a real classic. Again, it's not a very long book. It's a book by Henry James called The Turn of the Screw. This is the Dover Thrift Edition, so I'm not going to recommend you get this edition, and I'll show you why. That's the size of the print. It's really tiny. Um, it's not a long story, okay? 
Uh, this particular edition has only got 87 pages, but if you get it in like a normal print, like a bigger print, you'd probably find it runs to maybe definitely under 100 pages. It's an easy book to read in a day. It's also the kind of book that once you sit down to read this, you're not going to be able to put it down. I have voted this as my most terrifying book in my entire collection. For some bizarre reason, this book frightens the living bejesus out of me. Um, I haul it out every now and again and every couple of years and I read it. And it's not a book that I would read every year because it really, really frightens me. Um, it has so many different layers to it. When you read the story, you can interpret it in so many ways. But the way I interpret it is as I read it. I know the whole undercurrent of, um, you know, the sexually repressed woman and blah, blah, blah. But to me, this is, I read this as a, a, a possession, you know, a possession book. And it is really, really frightening because it comes, it, it's about children. If you haven't read this book, it's small. It could probably be, it could be read in a day. Um, perhaps if it's in bigger writing, perhaps you'd have to, or small, you know, if it's small like this, you'd have to split it into two days. But it's a book that I highly recommend. And then once you've read it, let me know down below whether this is scary or not, whether you found this terrifying. Okay, it's called The Turn of the Screw and it's by Henry James, one of my, my most frightening books ever. Then I have a book by Shirley Jackson. Um, I love Shirley Jackson. She's the one that wrote, oh, I'm going to show you the book. Um, she wrote this book and then she wrote a book, I think it's called We Are the Ones That Live in the Castle, or We Are the Ones That Live in the Castle, something like that. Um, also a terrific book. Um, but she did The Haunting of Hill House. Now, I'm sure everybody who doesn't live under a rock has seen the mini-series of this. It's very different to the book. Um, it was also made into a film called The Haunting um, in the 70s, I think it was, um, late 60s, early 70s. And it is about this house that is presumably haunted. And this, um, this parapsychologist takes a whole lot of people into the house and it's what happens inside the house to these people. Um, again, it can be read on many different levels. And although it looks like quite a thick book, the writing in this edition that I've got is really big. Okay, and um, this is the modern, the, the Penguin modern classics. Uh, thing with this, just a quick aside, thing with these uh, modern classics, I just love, I love the cover art on these. And no, it's not, the book is not upside down, that's actually a woman standing on this on the shore of a pond and that's her reflection okay because <laughs> um, i was reading this the other night and justin said to me god why are you reading that book looks upside down i'm like no silly it's the reflection of this of this person um great book not difficult to read um it is not a victorian novel it is merely set in a, uh, a set in the past and it was written in the 60s that or 50s i'm not too sure i think her first the first issue was, oh shit, I don't know, uh, 1959 was when it was written. So it's not actually Victorian, but it is set in a, a past time period. Great book, um, pretty scary stuff, uh, and just, it's, although it's a, it's a horror book, it's, it's fun. It's fun because of the, the setting and the time period that it was set in. So that's uh, Shirley Jackson, Haunting of Hill House. Short book, two days over. The next one I'm going to recommend to you, and this can be read in one day, is a book by Susan Hill, and it's called The Woman in Black. Now, we've all seen the Daniel Radcliffe movie of the name. There's a much better film called The Woman in Black. It was done in, I think, the 80s, early 80s. Uh, far, far better, far more scary than, or scarier than um, the Daniel Radcliffe one. Uh, but this is a really cool book. And this, the, the funny book, the funny thing about this book, when I first read it, I was like, oh my God, this is just the most amazing. Who is this, this woman? Who is this, uh, this Susan Hill? I must go and get more of her Victorian books. She must have been born in like the 1880s. The book was written in 1983. Shirley Jackson, uh, uh, Susan Hill, is, she, writes, she writes modern stuff. She writes tons of modern stuff. So it's a bit of a shocker when you realize this is actually an early 80s book. It is set in the Victorian times, um, or maybe a little bit later than that. And it, cons it consists of, a, of an old house on an island, okay, and this guy is sent over to, he's a lawyer, he's got to go and get all this, this old auntie, this old auntie died and he had to go and like sort out all her possessions on, the, on this island and the island is cut off from the rest of the, the coast every high tide and blah, 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 and there's ghosts and there's this, 
this horrible woman and oh my god it's it's really it's a proper proper ghost story and my my edition it's the vintage at vintage classics and you can see that it's very very big writing it's lovely writing to read especially for the elderly like myself who read by candlelight you know because uh, it's it's a book that you can read in a day um it's not very big and also mine's got like little little pictures at the top of each page each chapter's got a little picture the writing is big this particular version is only it is 207 207 pages but if you you can get a you can get a, a version that's under 200 pages okay it's highly recommended susan hill the woman in black so those are really really short books that you can read in a day or two the last book I want to show you, and this is for fans of Edgar Allan Poe. Now, I love Edgar Allan Poe. His stories are macabre in the extreme. He makes my heart beat faster, no pun intended. Um, again, this is a Collins classic, but this is different. This is not... I've got, I've got two Edgar Allan Poe books. I've got the essential Edgar Allan Poe in the Collins classic, which is all his short stories, okay? And then I have this. It's his poems, okay? It's The Raven, and other selected poems. Poe was a prolific writer. He wrote, fuck, he just didn't stop writing. He wrote tons of stuff. He has a very, very sad, um, he has a very sad history. He, um, if you want to read his biography, it's really interesting, very sad. But this is a book of poetry by him. And I'm sure we all know about The Raven, okay? It's a, it's a really cool uh, book. But a lot of the stuff is literally just that. All right? Not these long, all right? It's poems. So if you're not into poetry, then just don't get this because it is, it is, it's like hardcore poetry, okay? It's not just words that rhyme. But if you do like poetry, this is an absolute must. If you, again, if you don't like poetry, perhaps you could go online and try one or two of his poems. They all, it's all in the, the public domain so you can read it. See if you like them. I wouldn't start with The Raven. It's not. Everybody says, oh my God, it's his, it, it, his most famous one. And yes, it is his most famous poem. But it's a, it's, a, it's a very long poem. The poem I would start with is uh, this. It's called Alone. Okay. It's called Alone. Easy to remember, Alone. It's not very long. It's that. And then it's this little piece here. But it's a very accessible, and it's, 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 a, it's a poem that will hit home. Everyone will, uh, will be able to relate to it. Um, and then maybe if you like that poem, go to a slightly longer one, and then do The Raven. Okay, The Raven is not a place to dive into Edgar Allan Poe's poetry. All right. Um, so, yeah, there we go. If you like poetry, there's that. So, yeah, I won't take up any more of your time. I would rather let you use the time wisely and go and read a couple of these books. I'm Matt from Tubby Tarot and I will see you, oh wait, yeah I am, I'm Matt from Tubby Tarot and I will see you at the next book chat, bye. <laughs>